4.6, limits at infinity and asymptotes. So our definition of a limit at infinity begins like this. If the values of f of x become arbitrarily close to l, some real value l, as x becomes sufficiently large, we say that the function f has a limit at infinity, and we write the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l. If the values of f of x become arbitrarily close to l as x, for x less than 0, as the absolute value of x becomes sufficiently large, then we say that the function f has a limit at negative infinity, and write the limit as x approaches negative infinity of f of x equals l. Now, if either of those two things is true, then we can write that y equals l is a horizontal asymptote of f. That the function, the function as you go out in either direction, so say we have our value l, if the function at infinity is approaching l, or the function at negative infinity is approaching l, then that is a horizontal asymptote. So for each of the following functions f, evaluate the limit as x approaches negative infinity and the limit as x approaches positive infinity. Determine the horizontal asymptotes for f. All right, let's go ahead and take f of x equals 5 minus 2 over x squared. All right, x approaches positive infinity. As x approaches positive infinity of 5 minus 2 over x squared. Well, it appears that no matter how large x is, it's going to be positive for 1, or how negative for that matter. So that'll affect our second part of this. But here we're dividing by a larger and larger number as x gets larger and larger, which means this term, this term is going to 0. So our limit is 5. Now, by that same logic, as x gets more and more negative, gets larger and larger in the negative direction, that second term is going to 0. And so our limit there is 5. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 5. Horizontal asymptote of y equals 5 f of x equals sine x over x. I made a note here to use the squeeze theorem because we had to actually show this for other limits previously. The limit as x approaches 0. But this also works, let's go ahead and do this first, this also works for limits at infinity. This is trapped between 1 over x, negative 1 over x. Because the limit as x approaches infinity, okay, this approaches 0, this approaches 0, that requires, and that's actually true for positive and negative infinity, then the limit as x approaches infinity of sine x over x is 0, and the limit as x approaches negative infinity of sine x over x is also 0. So we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 0. And confirm that with a graph as well. Next we've got tangent inverse of x. Now we know something very well about tangent x. We know that it has horizontal or vertical asymptotes at pi over 2, negative pi over 2. Let's go ahead and write that fact down. As x approaches pi over 2 okay, of tangent x, this is positive infinity and the limit as x approaches negative pi over 2 of tangent x is negative infinity. So each of these separately, the first one tells us that the limit as x approaches infinity of tangent inverse x is pi over 2. The second statement tells us that the limit as x approaches negative infinity of tangent inverse of x is negative pi over 2. So we have horizontal asymptotes, we have two of them, of y equals pi over 2 
and y equals negative pi over 2, depending on which direction you're looking at. Now, let's just point out something here. What this means is that if you tell me I want, to be, I want the function to be very close to pi over 2, or in this case negative pi over 2, if I want the function to be very close to that limit, then what I need to do is give you an x value. I can say go out this far. Okay? I can t give you an x, say go out this far, and the function will be this close. Okay, that's kind of what this means. So when we come down to defining what this means very precisely, okay, the formal definition, that's what that means. You tell me how close you want it to be, and I'll tell you how far to go. Let's look at this next example. So before we consider the formal definition, let's think about the function y equals x cubed at plus or minus infinity. I'm going to draw a sketch here. The function x cubed looks something like this. So the limit as you go to positive infinity, as my x's get larger, my y values are also getting larger. Okay, so there's a point there. So the limit there is positive infinity. Well, as my x's decrease, my y's are decreasing as well. So this as you approach negative infinity of x cubed, it's negative infinity. Now what this means is that no matter how large, I can always find a point for my graph where the function value is larger. Okay? Those are two separate ideas. That last example and this one are the two ideas we're really struggling with when we talk about limits at infinity. So let's look at the formal definition, and I don't really expect that all of this will sink in, but I want you to pick up some, some, fa some things about it. We say that a function f has a limit at infinity if there exists a real number l such that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists an, a capital N greater than zero such that the absolute value of f of x minus l, if that is less than epsilon, for all x greater than whatever that n is we specified over here. In this case, we write the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals l. And then there's the similar idea for negative infinity. Okay, so I'm, we're really going to focus on this part right here. So what we want to do, if we just kind of walk through this step by step, first we want to say for all, for all epsilon greater than zero. So for example two, the first thing we want to do is say let epsilon be greater than zero. Okay. Now next we say there exists, the second big step here, there exists an n greater than zero. So we are going to say, now we have to say there exists one, so we're going to say choose n equal to something. I actually don't know what that is yet, but we'll get to that. Such that absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon for all x greater than n. Okay, so I'm going to use some scratch work. Actually, first let's do this. So then, the absolute value of f of x minus l, which is what we said we want to work with, we want to show that this is less than epsilon. So let's say f of x is 2 plus 1 over x minus 2, because our, our l, our f of x minus our l. Well, if we look at that, that is equal to the absolute value of 1 over x. Now, what I would like to say right here, I'm going to write this and then erase it. I would like to say that is less than epsilon. So erase that, and I'm going to go back over here, my scratch work, and I want to say, well, I know that 1 over x, 1 over the absolute value of x is going to, I want this to be less than epsilon. But what I need to say is that something about for all for all x greater than n. So I really need to say x is greater than something. Well, if I rearrange this, this means the absolute value of x is greater than 1 over epsilon. Okay, so if I go back here and say, hey, my, I want my x, okay, I want this to be 1 over epsilon. Right, so for x greater than 1 over epsilon. Let's take that down to a lowercase. 
for x greater than 1 over epsilon, then this is equal to one absolute value of 1 over x, which is then less than epsilon, which is what I wanted to show. Therefore, the limit as x approaches infinity of 2 plus 1 over x is equal to 2. You've said how close you want it to be, and I've said go out this far. Okay, so again, I really want you to pick up on just some of the some of the details. I'm not expecting you to be fluent in these, so let's go ahead and look at the other type. Now, I I kind of described what this was earlier. That you tell me how big you want the y value to be, and I tell you, you go out this far. Okay, so. It says, if for all m greater than 0, there exists an n greater than 0, such that f of x is greater than m for all x greater than n. In this case, we write the limit as x approaches infinity of f of x equals infinity. So we're going to use that to show what we determined earlier, that the limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed is equal to infinity. OK, and I'm going to walk through this the same way I did the other if for all m greater than 0. So first, let m be greater than 0. Now it says there exists, so we want to choose, okay, there exists an n greater than 0, so we want to choose n equal to something, such that f of x greater than or equal to, is greater than m for all x greater than n. So let's go to our Scratch work, uh, not yet. So consider f of x, let's go ahead and write it this way, f of x is greater than m. Okay, or x cubed is greater than m. Okay, now for my scratch work, I want to take x cubed is greater than m, and I'd really like to say x is greater than something. Going back here, I want to show that x is greater than something. So I can take the cube root of both sides. So if x is greater than or equal to or just greater than the cube root of m, then that's what we want. So this is going to be my n value. So I want to choose my n to be the cube root of m. Well, if x cubed is greater than Okay, so I really don't know this. So I really want to say consider consider f of x or x cubed. Okay, x cubed is going to be greater than the cube root of m. Okay, cubed, because it's x cubed. For x greater than the cube root of m. And x cubed is greater than m. Therefore, limit as x approaches infinity of x cubed equals infinity. All right. How a function behaves at its positive and negative at positive and negative infinity is called the end behavior. So that is at each of the at each of the function's ends, the left, the left, that's the negative infinity, and the right, that's the positive infinity. The function can exhibit one of three things, really. It could approach a horizontal asymptote, which we saw with inverse tangent, or 5 minus 2 over x squared, we saw that. It could approach infinity or negative infinity, like f of x equals x cubed. Or it might not approach a finite limit at all, and it doesn't approach infinity or negative infinity. Infinity. So it may have something like oscillating behavior. So like sine of x. Sine of x, its end behavior is just that it, it diverges. It just goes, sort of goes nowhere. Okay. So we can have one of those three cases. So let's go ahead and look at a couple of examples. f of x equals negative 5x cubed. Now if you are aware what that function looks like, it does something like this. So the opposite of what happens with x cubed because of the negative 5 there. So as, well, let's go ahead and do this for a. 
as x approaches bigger and bigger numbers, as x gets larger and larger, negative 5 times those large numbers is just more and more negative. So that one is going to approach negative infinity. Right. Now, as x gets more and more negative, then x cubed is more and more negative. And so these will approach positive values. So this will approach infinity. So the left end behavior is positive infinity, as evidenced by this. And the right is negative infinity, as evidenced by that graph. All right, part B. Limit as x approaches infinity of 2x to the fourth. Now, for both ends of this function, no matter whether they are positive or negative, we end up with x to the fourth being a positive value. Okay, which means this is going to be positive infinity for both. And that graph will look something like this. That's really a quadratic, but it'll look similar to that. Describe the end behavior of 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 5. All right, well, we could actually apply L'Hopital's rule with our limits here, but we're not going to do that. All right, let's take the limit. Okay, I have 3x minus 1 over 2x plus 5. I'm going to divide by x on every term here. This would be the limit as x approaches infinity of 3 minus 1 over x divided by 2 minus or plus 5 over x. Because each of these terms goes to 0, this limit is 3 halves. Now, you might notice those two terms would go to 0 regardless of whether x is positive or negative. So we might go ahead and just say that is for positive and negative infinity. All right, and that will work a lot of times. So we've just found both limits. At both ends of this function, it approaches 3 over 2. The end behavior of this function, 3x squared plus 2x, or 4x cubed minus 5x plus 7. Okay. Let's go ahead and start with the positive infinity, and this might apply to both. 3x squared plus 2x over 4x cubed minus 5x plus 7. Now, I'm going to divide by the largest exponent in the denominator. So I'm going to divide by... No, actually, I'll just do the squared. Let's do the squared. Oh, squared. Okay, although I believe we could, yes, we could definitely do it. In fact, we'll go ahead and do that. Let's make this, we're going to divide by the highest exponent in the denominator. All right. Well, first is going to be 3 over x. 3 over x plus 2 over x squared. Okay, the denominator will be 4 minus 5 over x squared plus 7 over x cubed. Now, regardless of the value of x, all of these go to 0, so this is going to be equal to 0. Because that's regardless of the value of x, positive or negative, this will, this will actually apply for both of these. Both ends approach 0. Now, for this one, we are going to divide by the highest exponent in the denominator. 3x squared plus 4x divided by x plus 2 divided by 1 over x. So we're multiplying by 1 over x over 1 over x. Okay. Now, let's see. That will be 3x 
plus 4 over 1 plus 2 over x. This goes to 0. Everything else is a constant. This actually approaches infinity because 3x goes to infinity. Now, that same logic will not apply to our negative infinity limit. Okay, the reason being, if x, and let's go ahead and write, let's go ahead and just write this, x plus 2, this is going to be equal to the limit. First step of logic will apply. These two are going to have the same limit. This will still go to 0. This will go to negative infinity, which means that our limit here is actually negative infinity. Okay, so be careful. If, if most of our x terms are canceling out, we're down to constants, then the limit, the positive and negative, are going to be the same. However, if we end up with an x term in our final limit, then it's going to matter. Okay, now let's actually use long division to investigate that last one a little more. Okay, we said it was going to be plus or minus infinity. So if I take 3x squared plus 4x and I divide this by x plus 2, that is 3x plus 6x, we'll subtract that, negative 2x, all right, minus 2, so that'll be negative 2x minus 4, bring down a plus 0, we have 4. So this is plus 4 over x minus 2. Well, 3x minus 2 plus 4 over x minus 2, as x goes to infinity, this portion goes to 0. And so our function actually approaches another function. What we just discovered is an oblique asymptote. As x goes to infinity, the function approaches another function. This only occurs when the degree of the numerator is one more than the denominator. Okay, that only happens then. All right, or at least for our intents and purposes. All right, now let's look at the end behavior of a one with a radical in it. All right, the limit x approaches infinity of 3x minus 2 over the square root of 4x squared plus 5. Okay. Now what we see here is that the denominator acts like, it acts like just an x term because we're taking the square root of an x squared. So what I'm going to multiply by is 1 over x over 1 over x, which is like dividing by an x squared in the numerator or in the denominator because square root of 1 over x squared is equal to 1 over x. So this is going to be all right, 3 minus 2 over x, the square root, square root of 4 minus or plus 5 over x squared. Several things go to 0. And so the limit here is 3 over the square root of 4, which is 2. The limit is 3 over 2. Now here, again, it, this is all going to 0, so this is actually the same limit for plus and minus infinity. Save ourselves some work. Right, number 10, describe the end behavior of this function. All right, let's go ahead and take our limit at infinity, and we'll have to see if it matters Okay, based on our based on our individual limits there. 7 minus 5e to the x. Let's go ahead and divide this by 1 over e to the x. Because as x gets larger, that's just that's a positive number. It's not going to be zero. In fact, e to the x is never going to be zero. Alright, so this is equal to 2 over e to the x plus 3 over 7 over e to the x minus 5. Alright, now for 
x greater than 0, this is going to go to 0. So our limit is negative 3 fifths. All right, now, let's go ahead and consider the limit going to negative infinity. 2 over, let's go ahead and take that actually. 2 plus 3e to the x over 7 minus 5e to the x. Well, as x is getting smaller and smaller, e to the x is actually going to 0. Which means this limit is actually 2 sevenths. So the two ends have very different behavior. All right, I'm going to break here so that we can continue sketching graphs in our next video.